Hello and welcome to the Children of Mary podcast. We do the best we can to be Mary's children and to make this her podcast, to talk about the things that she wants to talk about with a sense of her presence. Claire, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me. Special thanks to Claire because Claire does so much hard work helping to set all of this up. It really could not be done without her assistance. And behind Claire, we have a very, very good friend of ours. <laughs> she's truly a child of Mary. She's our dear friend and she's also a volunteer, but we love her first and foremost because she's a friend. She has her own YouTube channel. I think it's very important, especially for young girls, to subscribe to holy Catholic women like Emily. So her YouTube channel is Emily Alcarez, and I will put links for that below. So you better go and subscribe if you're watching this because she's my friend. <laughs> also in the room, we have Keenan. Keenan's always up to no good. Always. He's such a good guy, but he's always up to something. <laughs> Keenan, we love you. Who's this guy behind you? Whoa. Whoa, it's young Padre Pio. <laughs> <laughs> really? Adrian is uh, working at a Catholic school, doing good work over there. He loves it. He's, he work, he's working at the same Catholic school that I used to work at, and it's probably like deja vu, huh? It is. Yeah. Same age as when you were there. Wow, that's scary. Let's hope you walk in better footsteps than mine. <laughs> and with us, our special guest today is Father David. Father David is the parochial vicar at a local parish. And before we started this podcast, there's always a stories about before we started this podcast. In my brain, I already had, I, and they, I didn't just think of these, because I honestly, I haven't talked to Father David for more than five minutes, probably. We've not had good quality one-on-one -on -one time. <laughs> Father, I'm placing that on your shoulders. It's your fault. <laughs> No offense, it's probably my fault, actually. But deep down in my heart, I knew that, that Mary wanted Father David to be on the program. When we were praying about what we would talk about this week, who the guests would be for this podcast, the Blessed Virgin, as clear as she talks to me and other times, I had no other answer than Father David. Blessed Mother, what do you want Father David to talk about? Whatever Father David wants. All right, so here he is. And one thing, my first encounter with Father David, he was a seminarian, and he had the absolute sweetest of all time handlebars that you had ever seen a must it's a special mustache for our foreign listeners handlebars are a mustache that goes out like this and then it curls oh so beautifully the best mustache ever he shaved it we're not going to hold that against him he's older now he's got more wisdom but uh we love we love good mustaches and beards i used to have a sweet beard i grew it out but the not problem true. is my face not does not grow hair in the cheeks it only grows hair in the, in the chin. Mm -hmm. And one of my former pastors, who will not be named Father Bart, <laughs> said that we can't have Amish people working at our church. <laughs> so I shaved it, and everybody rejoiced. Now, let's get to our program. <laughs> Father, <laughs> Father, will you please lead us in prayer? Absolutely. Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. God, we thank you for this time. Uh, we offer ourselves to you through the hands of the mother that you gave us. Uh, we consecrate ourselves to her this time, our words, as you desire all our heart, our mind, our soul, our strength. We turn to the one who gave you all of that with every bit of herself. Um, help us to have Marian hearts. Help us in this time to be one with her uh, and her heart, which beats uh, with love for you and the sacred heart of Jesus. Um, Holy Spirit, come, spouse of Our Lady, and be with us, guide us, and uh, in this time, guard us as well um, from any assaults of the enemy so that we may be focused wholly on giving the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit glory. We ask all this through Mary as we pray. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, Mary that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, we fly unto thee, O Virgin of virgins, our mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petitions, but in thy mercy hear and answer me. Amen. St. John Vianney, pray, pray for us. St. Ignatius of Antioch, pray, pray for us. us. St. Teresa of the Therese of Lisieux, pray, pray for, for us. In the name of the Father, Father and the Son, Son and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. So something very beautiful happened to me the other day. I was walking around our campus and a group of young kids were walking by me. And one of them, even though he called me by my first name and didn't say Mr. in front of it, he said, Gabe, I love your podcast. And I said, Alex, I'm calling you by your first name, Alex, because I know you're listening. I said, Alex, I can't believe it because he's only a seventh grader. So we have seventh graders listening to the podcast. We, we have a lot of 
holy young men that I know of that listen to this podcast. Shout out to my boy Alex, to Toby, to Lance, to our man EK, and anybody else who's watching and listening. Holy young men, Father, who are taking seriously the call to holiness mm -hmm. and who I personally believe may have a vocation to the religious life or at least need to seriously discern it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've heard the quote, but St. John Bosco said that of three children born, one is called to the priesthood or the consecrated life. Mm -hmm. And so can you talk to us briefly about what is the priesthood? Why is the priesthood important and something that we should take careful and discern? Sure. Um, so it's Priesthood is the love of God for his people. Um, uh, I say constantly, I think there are way more vocations to the priesthood and religious life than we attribute because God is a good father. And so he's going to make sure his his children are cared for. The question is, is in a noisy world, are we hearing him? Um, that's, I think, the biggest problem. And so, uh, yeah, obviously the priesthood is what Christ established. So as to be able to continue his particular work, his mission for those whom he loves uh, to to bring his life and union with the Father and the Holy Spirit as well. Um, so uh, to those men and to anyone who's discerning, um, I would encourage you, you need to, to keep up the life of prayer. Um, it must be there. You have to spend time. And I always, I always really, we have to relate. I mean, God created the, 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 the theology of analogy, basically, of... Um, Things in the natural world will help us understand the greater things in the supernatural world. Like if you wanted to get to know a girl and you're like, I think I should date that girl, you got to go talk with her. And so if you think maybe there's the hints of of like the priesthood um, interest you, your heart is maybe at peace it, or if you were an altar server and uh, your heart's at home in the sanctuary, uh, that's a that's a good sign. Um, if uh, God put it on uh, put it on your heart at some like retreat or something like that, then uh, yeah, even more so, go and spend more time with Him so that He can be able uh, to speak to your heart more and more. And so too, like you get to know a person and their voice and the way they speak and their idiosyncrasies and all that sort of stuff. The more time you spend with God, uh, the more you're going to learn His voice. You're going to hear His voice. It's going to make you more and more attentive to Him. Um, so you got to have that that time of prayer just with him and um, so many other things that I'm sure y'all have talked about here in regards to a devotion to Our Lady, the one who perfectly listened, the one who perfectly received, who had her heart open to the Lord and everything that he would want to do uh, in her life and for all of us. Um, and so, yeah, Marian devotion, regular, uh, frequenting the sacraments uh, and daily prayer, most especially. Um, and what would you say to two men discerning the vocation of the priesthood, um, I guess tips for, for avoiding any pitfalls or being distracted um, during that process, which can be very difficult. Pretty girls. No. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, no, it's great that God gives uh, many wonderful ladies who have a beautiful heart, most especially, and love for the Lord. Um, if I will say, because obviously a guy is going to sit there and be discerning between these two. I always say God is calling boys to be not just guys, which are biologically older little boys. He's calling them to be men. And, and men are going to be fathers. The question is, what type of father are you going to be? Are you called to be a spiritual father? Or are you called to be a biological father? Those are the two vocations there. Um, and so uh, the question is, is you're going you're gonna to be interacting if at school, all these sorts, especially if we're talking younger ages, like, yeah, the girls are around. And you should have a natural attraction to the, the feminine. And so... Uh, but if you start to like, for instance, you're like, okay, well, I'm trying to see, like, am I called to marriage? If your prayer starts to suffer, but like we're stopping that, that route yes. right there. Yes. Um, so, uh, uh, yeah, so that would be one of the main things is we continue the prayer life. Disciples are disciplined. Uh, that's why those, those two words, it's very uh, not coincidence that they have the same root. Um, to be a disciple, you must be disciplined. So keep watching the life of prayer. And then the other, I mean, I would say eventually, depending on the age, uh, if the the pitfall is we, one of the pitfalls can be in not pursuing the priesthood would be calling cowardice prudence. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, at a certain point in the same way, looking at like the analogy of like natural things in the world, like if you're like, I want to date that girl, or you think you're supposed to marry her, well, you better go ask her out. 
Yeah. So you got to, you just got to go do it. And so in the same way, like seminary, I try to tell guys like all the time, seminary is not the place where you go to become a priest. Seminary is a place where you discern more directly um, if this is what God is calling you to. Is it this sort of fatherhood that you're calling me to? Uh, is this how I'm supposed to love God with all my heart, all my soul, all my strength, uh, and let him love me as well to, and to love his people? Um, and so I think we have to watch out too that we we don't keep dilly dallying, um, uh, but rather like yeah we have to take the plunge whatever step out of the boat uh, to go to seminary if that's uh, if we think God's calling us there because it's really the only place you're really going to do some of the the good deep discernment. I know a lot of former seminarians, and every single one of them, in my experience, is a better man for having gone to the seminary and going going to get the formation and to check it out. And I think would probably make them an even better father yeah. than before. Yeah, some of the best some of the best dads I know are are the guys who went to seminary and had a, like a more holistic formation. And again, to be able to concentrate on their life with Christ uh, and reorient, be subordinate to him and his will so that now they can be good leaders and fathers in their household. So yeah, and, and therefore not looking at it like, which I think a lot of guys might, looking at going to seminary and then maybe discerning out after five years and say, oh, it was a waste of time. But it's no, it would never be a waste of time, waste. right? No. So yeah. Father, um, for your own journey and vocation and stuff, what kind of, how did you know or how did you take those steps and when did you maybe have the confidence or where you, how did you get there? Sure. Okay. Um, my route is, uh, uh, my family was Sunday mass goers. Um, that was, sorry, mom and dad. That's about like the best, the most we did, uh, as a family, like growing up. And then I started to have my conversion for all those who might have like, um, uh, you know, experiential conversions. Mine was largely intellectual. So confirmation, though that's a sacrament and God surely bestowed grace, uh, the classes, like looking at the catechism and learning what our faith taught and like going to know the one uh, whom we love, uh, once I learned more about him, that helped me down that road. Uh, then I went to um, some of the Franciscan University Steubenville conferences. That was probably like one of, it ended up being one of the big moments where where God did plant that little seed of your call to the priesthood. There was a, a like, uh, uh, vocation thing, like call. come down vocation yeah, call. Thank you. I, was, do I don't want to call yeah. altar call, <laughs> but um, uh, there was a vocation call. Like if anybody thinks maybe they're they're called to the priesthood, like come on down and we'll pray with you. Um, and so I did. But I will say, like nothing else happened. Like after that, I was in high school. Uh, you know, played rugby, the St. Thomas High School, all all these sorts of things. Went to Franciscan University in Steubenville. Um, got my biology degree. Beautiful again, wonderful, beautiful ladies that helped me become the man I am today, and so thankful for for them. Um, uh, and I thought I was called to marriage. Uh, and then I will say, so I was going to be a doctor. That was my plan. I got my biology degree, took my MCAT, all those sorts of things. And um, uh, in a day of prayer or a time of prayer, um, I was just asking God kind of about the future, and He said, "I don't want you to be a doctor." And I said, "Wait, what?" <laughs> like, uh, well, you could have saved me some uh, application fees. That would have been nice um, uh, for medical school. But uh, so, okay, okay, you don't want me to be a doctor. There was peace about it. I was like, that's fine. Okay, everybody in my family is medical. Everyone, uh, and so, um, so it was different. And I just always thought I'd be a doc. And he said no. And then that became a, a very difficult road. Of he was silent for five years after that. Wow. I got like nothing in wow. prayer, like no real consolations. It was just, okay, I'm going to be a disciplined disciple. I know how I'm supposed to love him. I've heard from the saints. This is what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to, I'm going to go to mass every day. I'm going to pray my rosary. It was intermittent kind of there. Um, uh, uh, you know, frequent the sacraments, et cetera, et cetera. And then to try to make the story, the long story short, like one day, again, in the Adoration Chapel, spending time with the Lord, trying to make sure I was still open, putting, disposing myself to be able to hear him, um, uh, I said, like, I give up. <laughs> like, I'm tired. <laughs> and and I don't know, if it hit me across the head with a spiritual two by four, whatever it is, if I got spiritual air racks, I get that giant Q-tip out of the sky <laughs> out and like just clean this thing up. Like, I was like, I don't know why. I don't know. I don't know. I give up. And then I just get finally. And I go, what? Like, <laughs> I thought somebody was literally messing with me in the Adoration Chapel. Oh, um, wow. It's a one time, honestly, I think that God has ever spoken in that sort of way. It wasn't James Earl Jones voice, but <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> but it was remarkable enough. And then I realized it's just me and Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. And I said, okay, wait, what? 
And then he was a little coy. He was like, you know that thing you've been ignoring since freshman year of high school? Wow. And I was like, oh, no, what are you talking about? And he's like, I want you to be my priest. And I said, wow. you got it, boss. And I called the vocation director like the next day. So, um, uh, yeah, and, and he kind of pieced together things over the next few weeks and months, like as I was uh, um, discerning. And so you mentioned that you did the rosary a little bit in yes. that discernment and stuff. How was Mary a part of your journey and how did you grow close to her as you kept going? Sure. So I don't know exactly when it was when I was a little kid, but I realized, oh, my birthday is August 22nd on the Queenship oh, of Mary. Wow. So I was like, okay, she's mom. And uh, and so just had a greater devotion to her just there in general. Um, so to kind of even with the intellectual like conversion, if you want to call it that, um, realizing like she's the one who perfectly received him. If that's the goal of a Christian is, again, to love God with all the mind, all, all the heart, all the soul, all, all our strength, um, then I need to be like her. And so, like, I need to turn to her. I need to keep learning about her. I need to grow closer to her. I need to talk with her prayer. Um, and so I, I need that. And then in terms of, like, greater devotion, uh, uh towards her has been like on retreats. Uh, I've done the 30 day, I'm an oddity. Uh, we already knew that. Um, I've done the, <laughs> the 30 day Ignatian retreat actually twice. One wow. was like a finishing kind of discernment to going into seminary. And then the other was uh, like right before my diaconate. Um, and just those have been wonderful times. They've just been very Marian times. She's been the one who typically speaks the loudest in those times. And then the other is, uh, um, uh, because my like whole background is very science oriented, I didn't like read a lot of fiction when I was a kid, so I don't have a greatly formed imagination. Um, but when I pray the rosary, that's when the imagination like clicks on. Wow. And so, uh, so she just takes care of me there too. I mean, yeah. And so that's where again, even more of a love for her uh, comes in. And then, sorry, one more thing, but Please. backtracking time wise would be. Um, at confirmation, you know, when choosing your sponsor, I was like, St. Joseph is, he's just not appreciated enough. Yes. Uh, that was part of my, and I was like, if, if Mary is my mom over here because of the birthday that God's providence like chose for me, then he's going to be, uh, my helper to make me a man that I'm called to be. And so if he loved her and I'm asking him to, to be my, my patron, then even more so I need to like keep trying to love her and asking him to me love her and I'm, I'm sure he has so wow. beautiful. That's beautiful one quick question when you arrived you came literally you haven't looked at any of your notes or your books but this man literally came with like a human weight worth of books <laughs> like 15 or 20 books yeah, yeah. so tell tell I mean. me a little bit about the importance of maintaining spiritual reading especially in the life of the priest constantly learning because it sounds like you're a very receptive Try to those be. kind of things, yeah. Uh, try to be. Um, you can't love what you don't know. Um, and so, uh, yeah, I mean, you constantly have to be learning about the Lord. Um, uh, we recognize, like, a lot of times, especially when we're talking about, like, mental prayer and things like that, there's the big Ignatian sort of way, uh, using the imagination. But again, like I said, I, I don't necessarily have a, a wonderful or well-formed imagination. Uh, so maybe mine is more like St. Bruno and Lexio Divina style. Sure. And so, like, I will take... I mean, it could be the catechism. It would be the most boring, like, book that you would have, but... Uh, you know, something about our faith and just dig into that and then spend that time like talking with God about it. Uh, yeah, we have to keep um, uh, learning about the one who loves us. And thanks be to God, like there's plenty. And we, you know, there's many issues with the 21st century, but thanks be to God, a lot of things of the saints are available to us so that we can continue to hear how they loved God, how they received his love, and as well upon the mysteries and the beauties that he uh, revealed um, enlightened them with, uh, so that, uh, uh yeah, we can grow deeper in, in love with our Lord. So yeah, for a priest, you must keep, um, uh, you must keep in that conversation. Yeah, you call it holy study. I think the Dominicans more so call it that. Uh, but there must be that the constant interaction, the exchange. I mean, sure, Gabriel, you could say like the as a as a married man, like it's important for y'all to have like date nights with your wife sure. and talk about like substantial stuff. Yes. Um, you're sure you got to talk about the practicals and all that stuff, and that's why you go back to the rights books and look at all that sort of the practical of like right on the ground, the stuff that deals with the kids. Um, but at the same time, we got to go back to, as I try to instruct my engaged couples, like you got to take step backs, like retreats away, talk about like, okay, where are we headed? What's the ideal like in marriage yes. or in like fatherhood? Okay. So now I know that now. Um, 
so that I can reorient and subordinate myself more so to like the divine will. So are there any particular books that you would consider gold to you that you're like, this is, you know, like some saints carried around a particular book that they just loved. Are there any books that you just love? It's so difficult. Um, <laughs> well, you can pick three. Give me three. three? Yeah. Oh, man, you don't have to just pick awesome. one because you probably, I've never seen you with just one book. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so one that I'm very glad to have back uh, that I always go back to and I need to like get the Sarens to like reprint this thing. Um, but diocesan priest saints, it's by this priest who in like the 1950s, I go back to this book on a regular basis because as you were saying, like with, with the difficulties, with scandals, with all this sort of stuff, like my heart, the way God moved me was like, okay, things are on fire. I'm going to run and I'm going to save as many people as I can. Wow. And so, but I was like, but why don't we see that? Like where, where are these diocesan priests that are saying, it's like, is it just John Vianney? Come on. I know there's gotta be more. <laughs> um, and and I was so like, God's providence, it was it was a rough year in seminary. And I was like, God, I need like brothers that like you made saints. And I I, I don't even remember where I found this book, but it's just a whole book of diocesan priests, saints. He's like, we're, we're not counting anybody that started a religious community. Where it doesn't matter if they abandoned the diocesan, <laughs> not abandoned. If they, <laughs> like if God called them to start a religious community, then, then they, we don't want to count them in here. And so it's just, and like, St. Uh, John of Avila, who's now, he was blessed at this time, but now is a saint and a doctor of the church. So it's just great to have uh, those witnesses, those, again, older brothers in the faith um, and in the ministry. Uh, I mean, I try to go back to regularly the secret of the rosary from Louis de Montfort, especially because it's so bite-sized. So, yeah. And I guess to go back to what Gabe mentioned earlier, that we are blessed to have many great priests in this diocese, especially young priests. Um, and you had a homily... Uh, I think it was maybe two weeks ago that was that was streamed and it was online. I, I, I think I saw it on Facebook, uh, and it was very very moving. and And you didn't pull any punches, and you discussed things that some may say were maybe political. Um, but why do you think that's important to discuss those things? And why did you in that case? Um, because I'm a dad. Like I'm a spiritual dad. If I'm gonna care for my kids, I have to talk about the tough stuff. And I have to tell tell what God the Father has revealed to us, what he's spoken through the mystical body of Christ, uh, the church. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I have to talk about, uh, and not my opinion. Right. I'm supposed to give what Christ has given to the church, uh, to his bride and to his spiritual children, whichever analogy you wanna sit there and use. And so, but yeah, in a world that likes to have um, where we've been tricked into talking, to not living our faith and to not talking about the thing that matters absolutely the most, which is relationship with God and how that flows into every aspect of life, um, uh, because we've been tricked into that, we, we don't talk about it and then, and then it becomes offensive to the world. And so like my, but my job as a dad is to talk about those things and especially, yeah, with elections and stuff coming up, like people have things weighing on their hearts. And so it's, if your kid's got something they want to talk about, you need to talk about some of that stuff. And so, um, we do, uh, and again, not, not to give my, I try not to, yeah, some people might be offended by truth, but, mm. uh, they were offended by Jesus. So no, I'm not <laughs> Jesus, I'm not Jesus. Um, he's conformed me to ordination. Thanks be to God. But, uh, yeah, yeah. I, 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 but that's why I always go to, again, his teachings, that of the church. So, and I'm giving his, and you know, the words of St. Paul, like, woe to me if I don't. Yeah. Um, uh, and again, all, all I care about is like my spiritual kids getting to heaven. And, and so that means, yeah, but occasionally we got to talk about tough stuff as I'm sure again, any father has to talk to their kids about like the craziness of the world and the tough stuff in the world and where the attacks are going to come from all of them. I mean, yeah. So, so I'm going to, I'll put a link to that, uh, homily that Keenan mentioned just in case you're curious. Now, one of the things I kind of feel like is happening is that people will, and I think it's the devil that speaks through people to kind of like influence our culture to keep priests particularly, but even I, Claire and I feel the same pressure as catechists, um, as teachers don't talk about these things because it's taboo. And one of my big fears is that if we don't talk about these things, the, the younger generation isn't going to know it because I feel like we've been silenced so much in the public square. And so one of the pernicious ways that I feel like that I've noticed, especially around this, this time is that with the topic of abortion, people will say things like, 
and the title for this is like seamless garment, but they, I don't think that they even know that they're referring to a specific philosophy or theology. I think they're just, it's just coming out, but they'll say, well, if you're pro-life, you're pro all life. That means you're pro, it, it, basically you can fit anything under this pro-life umbrella. And this other topic is, you know, no, we'll just use immigration reform is equal to, or if not more important than uh, the killing of unborn children in the womb. So just briefly, could you give us a little catechesis? for? Because I really believe that there are young people, especially in Catholic schools, who've gr grown up and have never heard a single teaching on this topic. Um, there's just a brief rundown. Yeah, we, or, as um, long as you want. Uh, <laughs> we're, we're not going anywhere in great. <laughs> Um A couple things. One, I, I would just put out that, like, other things that maybe link to the yes. Catholic Answers uh, just did a great like five part series on uh, voting and how uh, abortion is the preeminent issue. Um, so the church reckon and the USCCB just put out like a document within like the last month on how abortion is the preeminent issue. So what does that mean? If it's the preeminent, it means there are other issues. The church recognizes this. our goal as Christians and like part of us being baptized as priests, prophets and kings is to proclaim the truth in the world, to sanctify it, snatch it back from the realms of the enemy, which we each have our own part to play within that battlefield of the, of the world. Um, and yeah, that, the kingly element is to govern it. So we have to, again, talk of things of politics, the way the world operates. Again, the, the lie has been for the last however many generations, like, don't talk about politics and religion. I mean, those are the, the most in, two important things. Like, <laughs> pretty much, those are pretty, I mean, to, to how to be properly ordered towards God, towards our end. Like, I love your coffee mug, the Fratum Mori, Mori. Uh, Mori. And um, uh, yeah, like, we have to remember our death because, like, we're called to be on this life to true life. Um, and, and then everything else should be shaped in accordance. Then the things of the polis, the city of man, even should be shaped towards the final end and for human flourishing. So sh the point is, is that, um, or to bring to your, to address your question more so directly is that, yeah, so there are many evils in this world. Um, and, um, and we want to eradicate all evils for the glory of God. Um, uh, but there's still hierarchy within things. Uh, the church won't mention, even in that new document that it put out, it says like, yeah, racism, like immigration, uh, reform, death penalty, all these sorts of issues. Like we want to, to deal with them in the most Christian way, according to our tradition. Um, but still, if we cannot respect the sanctity of life, if we cannot allow a person to come to live to live, and if anything, we we pray like that they be baptized, so they be saved by the God who loves them, who brought them into being, um, uh, who made at one moment like a soul, uh, an immortal soul that was meant to dwell with Him. Um, we have to we have to recognize that as as the the most important thing. Again, we can we can talk. There is arguably, I would say, like there is arguably a. A proper understanding maybe of like the seamless garment, like an orthodox version where, yeah, we go again, like all life sacred, there's dignity uh, to human life. We want to make sure like all people come to know, love and serve God in this life. Okay. And so we have to deal in lots of different areas so that may happen. But there's also like a, an unorthodox version, again, which just is moral relativism, like infecting ca Catholic moral teaching yeah. that says like everything's the same. Or everything is like, yeah, it's all it's all equal, or something like that. And it's like, no, no, there, there's hierarchy. There is uh, things which are, are more important. And, and the church, again, back to um, listening to Christ speaking through whether again it's a mystical body or his to his bride and through his bride, like she's spoken and she said that there are things that are, are are more important. And so we have to look at those as the issue. And right now, that is. That is the biggest issue that we have. 800,000 to a million people just in the United States alone are killed every year. And um, and we have to care for them. Um, and that has to influence. I'm not saying who to vote for or whatever thing like that. Like that's why I have to tell my, my spiritual kids. It's like, that should be the issue. And that's what the bishops are telling us. Like this is, they don't speak of it in this way, but like, just like how slavery was an issue in one time, like, cause that was the biggest thing happening. Like there were certainly other evils that were happening during that time, but that was the biggest one. The killing of 
hundreds of thousands of people, again, just in the US, not even speaking of the world, like that's the biggest issue Amen. that our world faces. Amen. And so it has to be talked about. And again, and just trying to be obedient uh, as, as a priest of Jesus Christ, um, and obedient to the vows that I took as, again, being made into a father, um, uh, like I, I had to instruct that day um, on how we could, uh, the things that we need to be pondering, that we need to be talking about, um, and again, the wisdom and the guiding principles of our faith in the church. So I remember a homily from St. John Vianney who talked about the importance of he has the moral obligation for his own salvation. To, to do the hard things and to say the hard things. Yeah. And speaking of John Vianney, uh, I want to kind of talk about confession a little bit. Being a youth minister, um, we, we try to teach our young people to go to confession frequently. And in my own growing up, when I was in college, I was trying to like, you know, root out sin. And once I started getting rid of mortal sin in my life, I started to, to be perfected in the Christian life. And my young people, as well as many of them on the internet have commented that when they try to go to confession frequently, often they're rebuked or treated as a burden, as I, I guess, I guess I'll absolve you this time, but really you shouldn't be coming back here unless you've done something serious. And then sometimes they go there with serious things and they're told that it's not serious. Yes. Um, so could you talk to us a little bit about the importance of frequent confession, confession in general, um, because one of the things we mentioned frequently on this program is that Mary always leads us to a better union with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And Mary as a mother, and applying this the natural analogy, she makes she wants to make sure that we're fed well with her son, the body of Christ, and she wants to make sure that we're clean like all mothers do. Mm -hmm. So will you please talk to us a little bit about that, Father? Um, yeah, sure. So... Uh, we desire, um, especially talking on this podcast, like we desire Marian hearts. Uh, we desire hearts that are uh, fully consumed with the love of God. Uh, we That process begins, as Jesus Christ told us, to repent and believe in the gospel, believe in the good news that the kingdom of God is here, like God has come on mission for the hearts of his people, um, and he uh, will not let uh, the enemy of his love uh, win the day. And so thanks be to God, he did what he did, and uh, and now the victory is won, even though the battle still might be raging for each of yes. our souls. And so that's one, the big place where the sacrament of reconciliation comes in, because after God has applied his precious blood to us in baptism, like we sadly do to our fallen nature, like we, we fall. And so that place of victory again ends up being the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, uh, it's unfortunate that uh, we, yes, uh, do have priests that will, um, that don't look kindly upon uh, those who would come with venial sins, uh, even though the Catechism 1458 says, without strictly Without being strictly necessary, confession of everyday faults, venial sins, is nevertheless strongly recommended by the church. So should you go to confession for venial sins? Yes. Um, it's strongly recommended by the church. Now, can you use holy water and all these sorts of things? Yes. Um, but the thing is, the pointing out of venial sins is to go, and why you do like a good, ex and we can talk about like how to go to confession well. Yes. Um, uh the point is, is to go in there because also in the catechism, when it's in the summary section, it says there's six effects of the sacrament of reconciliation, um, uh, that God, whatever you lay down at the foot of the cross, whatever you give to Jesus and expose your heart, he goes, I got a grace for that. I got a grace for that. Here you go to help you in that area. And so um, we want to bring that because when we've done our good examination, we, we should actually, if anything, not... The devil will always try to shame us and beat us down. Um, but what we try to do is have the heart that goes, oh, there's still area where I get to let Jesus love me. Oh, well, there's still area like where like I can be united with his heart. Like, okay, now I'm going to bring it. And I and here I can be confident. And so when the devil does try to bug me later, like I mean, nope, nope, I already dealt with that. <laughs> like God got that. So, um, and he's given me the grace still more fully. Um, I don't know if I'm going the direction no, you, you want me to go. You go wherever the Holy Spirit leads you. That's exactly where I would like you to go. I want to add one comment, add to that, because sometimes I've heard that, oh, it, it, it creates in a soul a uh, repressive mentality and that it's causing you to be scrupulous, where I, I tell people that it's to be delicate. So I want to add two more quotes to, yep, your, to your thing from Pope, Pope Pius XII. He said, let those therefore among the clergy who make light of or lessen esteem for frequent confession know what they are doing. 
what they are doing is alien to the spirit of Christ and disastrous for the mystical body of Christ. And when questioned John Paul II, they said it cr creates a repressive mentality. He says, anybody who says this is lying. By this sacrament, we are renewed in fervor, strengthened in our resolutions, and supported by divine encouragement. So anything that we do that gets us closer to God is not going to like lead us astray. It's going to help us. Uh, one question for you, Father, that I used to have when I was, I guess, coming, coming back to my faith was one thing that I used to tell myself um, for, for a reason not to go to confession was that I'm definitely going to commit these sins again. Uh, and so that would kind of keep me away, especially the mortal sins I was, I was committing. What would you say to someone that maybe is in that situation now, um, in their faith? Yeah, I will say as always, it, sometimes a question does come up actually in the confessional. Mm -hmm. And so the answer to it also depends on, on how, where, where I've heard the heart of the person. So um, generally, I guess speaking, uh, would be, um, I'll say something to the extent of like, if the Lord allows you, because yeah, God could take it away right now, but also he's not a helicopter parent, so he doesn't just like fix stuff for you. Right. Um, uh, he lets, if, if he lets his children like go through um, the the sad fate of falling to a sin again, it's so that he can, because what do fathers do? Fathers are supposed to encourage, like show, okay, you fell off your bike the first time I took off the training wheels or the 17th time, whatever it is. <laughs> like, okay, but you can do this. I know you can, like, come on. And so it's to keep our hearts humble um, because again, our goal is to, uh, and he will empower us to do so is to love him with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul, all our strength. And so if he's going to allow you to fall, it's to, to assist you in becoming a saint. So don't look at it in the discouraging way. Cause that's what the devil's going to try to do is to discourage you because he's like the anti-father. Uh, he wants to discourage you from going to this place where, yeah, it's tough. Like confessional's tough. Like it is humbling. Um, uh, uh it makes sense why, uh, like God gave us his sacrament. Again, it keeps us humble, um, so that we realize we need him. Uh, we ought utterly need him. And so like, be not discouraged, but rather again, if you fall, like know that the Lord is going to continue as long as you continue to come back to his heart and to repent and believe in the gospel, he will continue to fill you with his grace. And I will say as a priest, like, and this is what I say to people in the confessional, I have watched in my few short years of being a priest, I've watched people gradually like be, become more and more free from sins. And it's because they stay humble and they keep coming back to God and letting him love them there in their, yes, their brokenness, um, but where they need to be loved. And, and it's also beautiful and transformative to see, uh, just again, how he, um, yeah, how he transforms them through again, this area that, 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 that's so hard for them to deal with because it's, it's a habitual thing. And I also then jokingly do, and I think I'm stealing from like father Mike Schmidt's like, yeah, I don't want you inventing like new sins every time you come in here. So like, <laughs> it's okay. You got the same stuff. I mean, granted God wants it gone too, but yeah. 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 And, so. and then one other question, and I only ask this cause I have a lot of friends that aren't Catholic, but I think even maybe some Catholics have this, the same question. Um, and I, I think they watch the podcast, these friends, <laughs> they may or may not, but, um, I think a lot of uh, questions, uh, question that's asked a lot is why should I go to a priest to confess my sins or why do I have to in terms of, in terms of being Catholic? Sure. Um, so it's always God who absolves sins. Uh, and so this also can begin to get us maybe the transition, not trying to get out of your question, right. um, of how to go to confession well. Um, but like, so it's going to be God who, who is going to forgive the sins. We need to go to him first before you get into the confessional, you need to say like, I'm sorry, Lord, I love you. Like help me hate sin. Um, and like ask for forgiveness, renounce those sins. Um, uh, but at the same time too, like Christ continuing his work. I, I wish I had it memorized, but, uh, in one part of the catechism, it says like the church is the mystical body of Christ by which like Christ is still living and active and doing his one same mission. Uh, to save his people. Um, and so uh, he left the priesthood, gave her uh, the, the priest, his priesthood on this earth, uh, giving it the power to bind and loose. Um, and so too the surety of that and made the established a sacrament so that we would have a surety of these, uh, that our sins are forgiven. If anybody, whether it be Catholic or not, has ever um, uh, realized like, oh, I really did something bad. Um, and then like ask God for forgiveness, 
like I'd be surprised if there was somebody out there who said they never got attacked with like a thought that was like, were you really forgiven? <laughs> like that's why right. Christ gave his church the ability, the, the sacrament of reconciliation. So you knew, so surely the objective was done. You were reconciled with Christ. You were also reconciled with the whole of the church, all those people, because sin has a societal effect. Um, but you know, you were absolved. Um, when the when the priest uses the the words of absolution, uh, um, you are absolved of your sins, and you can be free. And now, when the devil tries to maybe attack, you go, nope, like sorry, that was already taken care of. Um, <laughs> And you can have some peace about you because you you are objectively like reordered to God um, and to his love. And he is back within your heart. So, I mean, one, there's plenty of other right. arguments there. Right, right, right. CatholicAnswers.com yeah. uh, or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. And, and Jesus wanted this because some people yeah. will say, Jesus died on the cross for my sins. And it's like, yeah, after he died on the cross for my sins, he came back and told the apostles, yeah. whose sins you forgive, they are forgiven, whose sins you retain are retained so it's like this is jesus's idea this is not father david's yeah, yeah. perverse you know idea of i'm just gonna sit here all day and listen to your bad stories <laughs> <laughs> one thing that i noticed when yeah. i was making progress i had the horrible habit of church hopping to find a priest yeah. and i didn't want to go back to the same priest because he'd be like you're a failure so i would go and find the priest over here and then i would travel across town to this priest over there i found personally that i didn't start making progress until i went back to the same priest over and over and over again, yep. and then I could like have some accountability. Do you recommend church hopping, or do you micro? What do you What do you recommend? I recommend what the saints recommend, which is what you found to be true, which is have a regular confessor. Um, a regular confessor is it can help greatly. They can also begin to figure out if it actually is scrupulosity. It yeah. does exist, um, uh, but so too he can begin to again remind you of the mercy of God. Uh, so too, um, and I was trying to look for it right here it, within the rights of. Uh, the, the rights book for the Sacrament of Reconciliation, um, it does remind us that the priest is supposed to provide like some sort of counsel. It's not yes. counseling. It's not necessarily spiritual direction. And that, again, goes into like how we go, uh, how we uh, celebrate the Sacrament of Reconciliation rightly. Um, uh, but no, to, yes, have a regular confessor. Allow them uh, to be the one, uh, again, it, it's it's also again a remedy in the sense of we were just talking about humility yes. um like yeah it is actually harder like i don't think we can deny that that's yeah, it's, it's not more difficult to, it is more difficult to go to the same confessor over and over again um but if he's a good priest he's gonna go like okay my kid's hurting yeah. and he's gonna figure out like what's the right and this goes into penances and stuff too like what's the right medicine for right now um uh, I'll tell you, like, like for people who are stuck in like habitual sins, even though we we do, I mean, this is why the early church had like big, gigantic penances and stuff, so we got the gravity of sin. Um, uh, but often those are lighter. Yeah. As a soul progresses, and I go like, now you're stronger. Like you can do more. And so, yes. and I'll call them on. I'll be like, yeah. And we're called again, priests, prophets, and king by our baptism. So you need to do what priests do sacrifice, do reparation, uh, you know, like offer. Now you can do bigger prayers because you're, you're growing in maturity. So, um, but yeah, a good, a good priest can can again assist. And this is what the saints will say to yes, use a regular confessor. Now, can you tell me how to make a good confession so that it's like worthy and efficacious? How do you make a good integral confession? Sure. Oh, you just, nice. Um, yeah. Uh, <laughs> if that word means what I think it means. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> oh yeah. Um, yeah, so we need uh, we need all the parts of the confession to be like integral, a whole. Um, so the rites book, for instance, or again, you can find it in the catechism. Like basically, we start the uh, the section on reconciliation at fourteen twenty two. I would encourage you, like if you're if you're if you don't understand the sacrament of reconciliation, whether again Catholic or non Catholic, because lots of people haven't even as Catholics been well catechized, and you just want to understand the mercy of God's love for you, I would recommend reading the whole catechism. The catechism is beautiful. Yes, it's written for catechists, but there's tons of good content to just chew on and allow you to realize like, this is how God loves you. This is how God loves you. Um, uh, yeah, we need contrition. We need confession of sins. We need an act of penance and we need absolution. But the issue is, is probably one of the most misunderstood parts is the contrition part. Um, because as the right will tell us, as a church tells us, like we need heartfelt sorrow and aversion for the sin committed along with the intention of sinning no more. That's what we're supposed to have. He still recognizes like our, our imperfect contrition 
a lot of times just fear of hell. Like he can take that, like he's got, he can perfect it, he can elevate it and make it uh, still the means by which he can bestow grace. Yeah. Um, uh, but the goal, if our goal is not just like consumeristic Catholicism, or if our goal is not just like the bare minimum, but again, to love God with all our heart, all our mind, all our soul and our strength, then a lover should desire to do more for the one uh, who loves them. Again, this is why I would encourage you, you got it. We got to learn more. This is where the holy study all comes in because we got to know more about the one who loves us because then when we encounter that, then we go, okay, I, I need to love more. Um, so we should really spend, um, some time before we go into the confessional, not just in the line, uh, I would argue, uh, but to ask God uh, for a deeper love of him, a deeper love of him. And also we need to ask for the, the it's actually not the contrary. It actually goes along with love, uh, hate of sin. Uh, the, the opposite of love is actually indifference, like not caring. Hatred goes along with sin. Like it, the, the Lord says in scripture, like he, he hates evils. Um, and so to love him and to be a one heart with him means to like hate the evils he hates. Um, and so too, like, so God, I, I want to love you more. Please come into my heart, like have your way. So too, Lord, like help me to hate the things that you hate, but to hate them for the reason like you hate. Um, uh, and yeah, help me to love you, to love you with all my heart, all my soul, all my mind, all my strength. Um, that's a good prayer to do right before you're going to have a good examination of conscience. Yeah. And so note though that, like it, you might have, you might, maybe, maybe you got a great one in your head. Um, uh, or you got like a little pamphlet that's like at the back of church. The, I will say the pamphlets in the back of church are typically for the people who are, um, uh, uh, you know, it's got, it's got the big stuff in it, but it, I will say, and those are good to use again, yeah. good to use, especially if there's like some regular vices and things like that. Again, totally fine to use. I would actually suggest like making rotations between examinations of yes. conscience. Um, there's like a good one online. It's like 43 pages long. Um, uh, <laughs> but it's like, it's one for each month of the year. Wow. So it's going through like a different virtue and different vice like each month. So, um, uh, but yeah, there's big, long, thorough ones. Uh, I think Father Mike Schmidt's at like Bulldog Catholic or whatever. Like he has one yeah, that's like, I like that one. 12 pages it's long. It's called or The Detailed Examination of yeah, Conscience. It's, it's really good to it's, start. It's like sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yes, it is very good. Um, uh, yeah, and so it's a great one to start, but it's also a great one like if you haven't, if if you have another one that you typically use at your parish, um, uh, yeah, switch it up again so as to be able to ex allow the the light of the world to cast light on different areas where there might be some darkness in the heart um and so yeah do that thorough examination of conscience with that i have no problem like i'll say as a priest like bring that whole puppy in like bring the list in um because you're already supposed to have had this time like looking at yeah. it with the lord and that next step is again uh like we kind of spoke a little bit about is like renouncing those sins like lord i I hate these. Maybe I don't hate them enough. Like help me to hate them more by loving you more. And so like I renounce these sins. I ask that like, uh, like that you free me from them. I'm going to go to the sacrament of reconciliation, but Lord, I ask for your graces like now upon me as I ask for your forgiveness. Um, uh, but then knowing that you've, you've already done so that good, like, uh, intimate and, um, uh, relational work, if you want to call it that, uh, then yes, go to where the Lord is truly present in, in, in the priesthood to absolve you of your sins. And you can just list them out. Um, uh, kind of, you know, I, we we're talking a little bit before, um, uh, I know it was a no, no, um, <laughs> but, uh, uh, but yeah, so th the way to come in then to the confessional, like from that place where you've done all that good, like tilling of the soil. So now when the, the Lord desires to like plant the seed again, that's going to grow and bear much fruit and life. Um, uh, like as you come in, like we we're even talking, just going through the right. This is why the rights books I even love, um, because the right will show you that the way to begin is actually it's the penitent. It says the penitent then makes the sign of the cross, which the priest makes also actually may make also. So it's really, a lot of times I'm in the confessional, I'm like waiting, like what's happening? I think I heard somebody cause I'm not trying to like look around cause I'm trying to allow people to be anonymous. Um, uh, but yeah, they're supposed to reclaim themselves in the name of the father and of the son and of the Holy spirit. And then the priest, yes, it's excited that, uh, that a, a sinner has come back to the love of the father. Like 
may claim themselves as well. And then uh, the penitent uh, will say, like, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It's been, you know, like a year or, you know, a, however many, a month, week, whatever it is, uh, maybe 15, 20 years. Like, please, if that's you, please come back to the Lord's love for you uh, in the sacrament of reconciliation. Um and then after, like, again, you say, like, it's been so long, uh, which helps the divine, the physician, the spiritual physician be able to know how to listen and to hear, and again, to, to choose the right medicine uh, for the wounds that are there. Um, also, too, I would encourage you to say, like, whether you're married or not, um, those sorts of things, states in life. Like, if, if, if I hear, like, oh, I'm a religious brother, and I, and I hear, like, Oh, I'm not praying. I'm be like, uh, yeah, like the wrath is going to come out a little bit more. No, don't be scared. But like, no, that, that's it's it is more serious. Like, if right. you're a priest and you tell me you're not praying, like we have way bigger. That's going to definitely be the thing I'm going to focus on more than any of the other stuff because you are walking into a battlefield with bullseyes all over your back, and it's going to kill your children. So, um, spirit children. So, uh, yeah. So after that's known, then I. It says, like, the priest may pray, like a little prayer, like, may God, who has enlightened every heart, help you to know your sins and trust in his mercy. And then the penitent can just go ahead and begin to uh, just say, like, yeah, I gossiped like seven times. I, you know, whatever the sins may be, number and kind, that's we want to do that, which is, this is a good reason why I, I, I don't know if y'all have talked about, like, examinations of conscience nope. and stuff at the, at the end of the night ever before, but this is a common practice of the saints as well. To each night, like, typically it's done in, for priests, like, it's done at night prayer. Um, we take the time, and we just look at the day, and, like, where, not, to, not just an examination of conscience, like, where's all the sins that I did, but, like, where, God, did I not love you well? Yeah. Where did I not love you well? And where, where too, um, are you calling me to love you better? Um, and maybe even, uh, with, without going into like examines totally, like, like what was a cause of that? So that yeah. maybe the next day I can look at how to avoid that. Um, uh, which will get us to like into that next part that we want to actually still, I would argue have before we get to the confessional, which is, um, which is sorry for the mess in the timeline, but, uh, is just have a little bit of a resolution on what we can do. Yes. Sometimes that's the, the one thing I ask in confession besides like, how's prayer? Cause a lot of times people don't mention prayer and I'm like, how's prayer? Right. Like I realize there's all these sins, but if you're not praying, you're toast. Yeah. So, um, uh, I'll just go like, so what's the one thing that you think you're called to like to do that God's calling you to do after this? Like out of all those things, what's the thing you're going to change? Most people haven't thought of it. But I'm like, you're not going to get your, what's the like phrase? You're going to get the same thing. Yeah. Like if you never, um, uh, so yeah, knowing, like having a resolution of, okay, what's the thing? Well, we can do that nightly. We can do that daily, but especially with the sacrament of reconciliation. Uh, yeah. So we want to do number and kind. Um, and then, yeah, once that's had, or uh, once that's been done, you've laid that all at the foot of the cross at the heart of Jesus. Um, then yeah, then, uh, the, the priest may, may not, he might use the penance to be the medicine. He might use the penance to be the thing, which is kind of in a certain sense, like giving you counsel. Um, like I use, y'all had one on our lady of sorrows. Yes. Like a lot of times when like, uh, marriages are rough. Um, I'll tell, I'll tell, especially wives, like turn to our lady. If there's anyone who could have been like, upset with injustices and things like that in life and yeah. the way people were loving Jesus or not loving Jesus and caring for the family. It's Mary. Uh, and so like turn to her heart, which aches with you and is there with you. Um, and, uh, uh, and that's it. You know, I, I won't give them like a bunch of counseling about sure. like things in their marriage. I just go like, turn to her heart. Her heart's going to console you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so it might be the penance or there might be again, like a little thing, like a lot of times uh, I fully admit and it, it did it during, uh, our parish did like a drive through confessions when, sure. as soon as we had like the lockdown, I was like, we got to do this. All I care about is saving souls. So it's anointing baptism and reconciliation is all I care about right now. Um, and, uh, um, and I mean, those were every, I mean, the devil was on big time attack. And so, uh, a lot of people's vices were coming back up. And so my, my main question was just like, are you house prayer? Are you praying? And they're like, it kind of fell away. And I'm like, okay, right. that's that's all we're doing. Okay, right. tell me what prayer would look like if uh, you were to start tomorrow. And you're just like, well, I'd start praying the Our Father. I'm like, that is not going to save you. <laughs> that's not going to be enough. Okay, <laughs> uh, it's a great prayer. Jesus taught us it, but it's God. God wants all your heart. And so there's more. And again, disciples are disciplined. So um, let's just figure out what that discipline is going to look like. It's mm -hmm. not going to look like you know Alfonso Sigori tomorrow, okay, or whatever. Uh, Saint you love, but 
with time, like in the same way you get in the gym and yeah. you start to grow. Um, so, uh, yeah. And so then let the, either so a little bit of counsel, dependence, and then like go forth and, and I encourage you to do it as, uh, like soon, so you don't forget. And something I, I sometimes encourage uh, 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 penitence is, is maybe it ends up being this, that, like a regular part of your life. Like if they were saying like pray a decade of the rosary or something right. like that. Like maybe you do that every day. And that's right. that's also my like little thing. Like maybe they'll start praying the rosary. <laughs> um, uh, uh, but yeah, like use that because then that can remind you not of the sins but of what God has gotten rid of. Like, yes, yeah. the sins, but like of his mercy and what he's like conquered and, uh, and yes, that his mercy was poured upon you. And it's that sort of God that loves you. Um, so, um, yeah. I now you, you uh, earlier, you were using a lot of analogies of parents. Mm. Um, and one of the things that I noticed from being a youth minister is that a lot of the sins of the children come from the parents. At first, I was just thinking of their cell phone usages. I don't know mm. if you hear a lot of sins from teenagers because of rooting from cell phone, but a large part is what's going on at home. Can you give us some tips and advice that would make your life as a priest better if parents would take their responsibility more seriously and what that would look like in a family? All right, podcast two. Um, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. <laughs> How long do we have again? This, um, is, this is my last question no, no, on my okay. list. <laughs> I just know you love it, so I wanted uh, to I pull do, it out I of do. you. Um, uh, so you can't give what you don't have. I heard you say it. It's a common phrase that we know. Um, uh, so the goal of marriage, procreation and education of children, and yes, the union of the spouses, but the education of the children is supposed to be like, again, helping them to love God with all their mind, their heart, their soul, their strength. So if you want to help your kids, you need to do some of the things we've t all have talked about in this podcast. And we talked about a, a, kind of towards the very beginning, like there needs to be a regular life of prayer. There needs to be like coming to the Lord's sacraments on a regular basis. Um, yes. If you if you haven't gone back to church yet, like, please come back to the Lord's love for you. Um, uh, he wants to give himself to his bride and allow the two flesh to become one. So you're united with him. And so please come back to mass. Um, uh, and so too, but frequenting, but with a heart that's repentant and that's open to him. And this is why we want to go to the sacrament of reconciliation. Um, and if you want your kids uh, to know the importance of that sacrament, like you need to go to parents. Yeah. Um, and so I would highly encourage uh, um, the main thing is uh, for parents, I mean, I can go like a million different ways, but um, it's going to be take your kids to the sacrament of reconciliation because especially at early ages, they can experience the love of God the Father for them in, uh, in his son, in the priesthood, and again, receive the power of the Holy Spirit all in that sacrament. Um, uh, that's, uh, that's part of um, your mission. That's why God gave you that child um, so that you could be a part of saving a soul um, and allowing the victory of Christ to be won in that child's life. Um, and so would highly encourage that. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we can go all I into know. We'll, uh, we'll screen times, back. screen times, all that sort of stuff. Like yes. shut off the screens. Like yes, cell phones are a gigantic problem. So many and parents one just my, give their kids. Go ahead. Yeah, one of my, and one of my favorite quotes kind of relating to that was, Adrian had told me it a while ago, but it's from Fulton Sheen. He says, each and every child has an eternal crown prepared for them in heaven and woe to the parents that don't acknowledge that eternal crown. Amen. Yeah. Beautiful. Father, is there any last thing you'd like to talk about? Anything you want to get off your heart, get off your chest that you wish that you could get out there? Mm, still too many things. <laughs> um, just really, I mean, honestly, pray for priests on this uh, this memorial of St. Ignatius of Antioch that we may be willing, especially we're talking about political things, but just standing up again for God and our faith and to, again, praying for priests, to love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength, to be willing to, as we said with, or on this Feast of St. Ignatius, to be ground like wheat, even if we're not being eaten by lions, <laughs> uh, that we, even if it means all the attacks from the world, like in, in hating us, that we be good dads. That are will that um, uh, that love our kids to death, uh, that or to use you know the the, the analogy of uh, uh, 
that's in Ephesians 5, like that we like love our bride as Christ of the church to lay down our life. Um, that's what we need. Those are the priests we need. And those are the priests that talking vocations that are going to, when they live joyfully um, and, and people can begin to see like, this is a fatherhood like I can do uh, that will allow the calls that are out there um, to be able to be responded to uh, and with joy as well. So um yeah, please, please pray for priests, uh, pray for, and as well, the not just for vocations, but pray that uh, the call, the vocations may be responded to. Pray for that grace, that courage that's needed to respond to the vocation that is out there, because there are, I would guarantee, many vocations. We're just not responding to them. I have a feeling we'll have a big flood of them coming up soon. We'll see. <laughs> Mary's will. <laughs> will you please uh, lead us in a Hail Mary? Yes. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen. Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen. Brothers and sisters, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Children of Mary podcast. Please pray for priests, pray for us. Also go to iTunes and to Google and to Spotify and all those. Give us five stars and good comments. If you don't like this program, why are you hate watching us? And if you're going to hit the thumbs down, do me a favor and hit it twice. That'll really show me how much you hate this program. God bless you. God love you. And we'll see you soon.